Hello my dear friends and welcome to this video. In this video we will be creating a smooth carousel slider using just HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We won't be using any framework, any library and you will get idea how these frameworks like Bootstrap, old carousel they work behind the scenes. Okay, So it's fully smooth. You can see the images slide with a beautiful transition. Okay, So you can click this next button or you can click previous button to get the previous images. Correct? I hope you will enjoy this video so watch it till the end. For any code links, you'll get in the video description. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll try my best to help you out. So first create a new folder on your desktop and name it smooth carousel slider. Now open up your VS code and simply open this folder in this code editor. You can do that by dragging it inside the code editor. Okay, so now we have to create three basic files. The first will be index.html, which will hold our template. Okay. And then the second one will be our script.js file, where we will be writing our JavaScript logic. Then lastly, we will uh, design our UI using a CSS file. So you can name it style.css. So in index.html, we'll create a basic HTML5 template. So simply write HTML colon 5 and hit enter. Here in title, you can give smooth carousel slider. Now in body, we will create div elements. So you have to give class names. Okay, so you can give any class name you like, but I always recommend you giving a meaningful name. So we can say carousel container. So basically, we'll have a container. Inside this, we will have images and the buttons, right? So inside this, first of all, again I will be creating a div called carousel mm, slides. You can say, okay. So which will contain our carousel slides, and then again we'll have buttons so buttons will be outside directly so we can say button you can say pref button so previous button and then next button okay so here you can say previous then here you can say next so instead of saying carousel slide i think carousel slide will be a better name all right now also let us link our style css so we can say link rel equals to style sheet in href we'll have style.css similarly in javascript here also we'll be linking our javascript file script src script.js okay so we have done the basic linking and let us design our basic ui right so we'll first go to carousel this one style so we'll say dot carousel container okay so basically we'll add some border so that we can debug the ui so one pixel solid all right also let us open up this in live server so that we can see what it looks like so you can see there is a black border with two buttons right so for now we can give a height so we can say height 450 pixels so so that it's fixed it's a little bit more for me because i've zoomed up so you can adjust the height depending on your requirement okay so that's the height for me and now we'll be using the concept of css positioning so basically position absolute position relative okay so this concept we'll be using so make sure you know this okay or you can check out other videos by other developers okay on this topic so here what we will do we will now make this position relative all right so that these buttons and the images they move according to this okay container in accordance to the container so we will now select these buttons as well dot pref button comma dot next btn okay previous button next button so we will say position absolute so here we want position absolute so that we can move it freely okay inside this parent container so we'll say top 50 percent so basically it will be coming here halfway from the top and then again we'll also style them separately so previous button will have its own styles the next button will have its own styles so previous button left will be around 20 pixels from the left then next button will be 20 pixels from the right okay from the right edge this is our next button let us add some basic styling to our buttons we can say add a fixed width like 150 pixels i think it's too much you can make it 100 pixels then you can add some padding uh, 10 pixels now one strange thing about this button is that uh, i think okay it's fine spreading is too much i think because i've zoomed up a little bit more yeah height can be 450 Padding, you can re reduce it a bit 
creating 5 pixels. Yeah, that's fine. And if you are having some strange border, then you can give your own custom borders like this. So, border 1 pixel solid, so you can say hash uh, 444 four, four, like this, a gray color. So, you can create custom buttons like that. So, here UI is not our concern, but this will be the basic frame where our images will be rendered. Okay. Now, let us go to our JavaScript file and here we will render the images. So, I will drag this folder here. So, I have already prepared a folder where we have four images. So, you can put any number of images and uh, you can put any name you like. Okay. Just make sure you reference them properly. So, now we will create an array in our JavaScript code. All right. So, images. Here we will have four images, img1.jpg, img2.jpg, img3.jpg and img4.jpg. So basically I have mentioned these four images in an array. Okay? So I will be looping through all of them and I will display them inside this container. Sorry. Yeah. So now we want to display all these images inside this carousel slide. So we have to obviously select this, right? So, we will use document query selector. So, we will say carousel slide equals to document dot query selector hash and what was the uh, not hash it will be dot because it is a class name carousel slide correct. So, now we want to run a for loop. So, we can say for let image or we will be using actually this normal for loop starting with variable i. So, you can use let which is the ES6 version let i equals to 0, i less than images dot length and i plus plus. So, now here you will see a problem when we use this. Basically, we should be running this loop in reverse order. Now, I will tell you just in a second. First, now we have to create image elements. So, we will say image el, you can give any name. So, we will create document dot create element. We will create like this and the elements name is img. Okay, that is the tag, img tag. Now, here we will be adding our SRC. Okay. Basically, here we want to store the paths. Okay. We want to store the path of the images. So, we can say images slash image1.jpg. So, this is basically a relative URL. Okay. First, we have the folder name, then we have the file name. So, the SRC will be equal to this loops item. Okay. So, we can say images i. Now, simply we have to add this image element inside this carousel slide. So, what we will say? Carousel slide dot append child. So there is a method called append child. Simply you have to add this object. Now I think the images will be rendered. But the problem is that they are coming one below the other. So what we can do to avoid this, we have to similarly use position absolute. So we will now target those images using our CSS. So we will say carousel slide and all those images. So it's a descendant selector right here. So all the images inside this carousel slide. Okay. So basically we'll make them position absolute. Right. And we want its top to be 0, basically the top left, okay. We want its uh, top left to be positioned with the top left of the parent. So now that's our image. But the problem is, I think it's exceeding the height of the parent. So we can also restrict the height like this. We can say height 100% of the parent container, like this. And width also, we want it to be 100% of the parent container. So basically, it will fill the width and height of the carousel. Now we want object fit cover. Why do we want that? We want to put object fit cover because the image is not in proper ratio and proportion, right? So once we use object fit cover, it will crop the image and properly adjust it, okay, according to the width and height that you have given. It will put the image in proportion. Now the problem is, uh, this is not image 1. As you might guess, image 1 is actually different. So there is a tree here and there is a scenery here, right? This is some, in some forest, okay? So this is actually image 4. So what is happening? Whenever we are running for loop, the first images are being rendered and then later the subsequent images are rendered on top of the previous image. So this is why the fourth image, the last image is appearing in the top. Okay, Because the previous images are below it because they have already been rendered before. So whatever new rendering is happening is happening on top. So if we run this loop in reverse order, then what we will get is we will get the first image. Okay, So we can simply say images.length minus 1. So basically we want to start from the last index and i greater than 0, greater than equals to 0 because it has to go till 0, then i minus minus. Now you can see the first image is at the top. So when we click the previous button, it should show the images, okay, previous. And when we click next button, it should show image 2, image 3 and so on. Alright. 
So now what we will do, first again we will select these two buttons, okay. So this previous button and next button, we will select them. So we will say pref btn equals to document dot query selector dot pref btn. So I think that's the class name, yes. And similarly, we also have the next button, next btn equals to document dot query selector next hyphen btn. So these are the two buttons. Now let us add event listeners here. So previous button dot add event listener click. So whenever we click this, we want to call function here. Similarly, whenever we click the next button, we want to call a function, okay. So now what we will do, we want to run a function here, which will be basically update position, alright. Now before that, I want to define few constants, which I will be using it, basically it's an enum value. So we can say dir, dir stands for direction. So I want to define two directions, left will be minus 1, here I am giving capital okay so that it's a so that we can easily know by looking at it that it's a constant for right it will be one so if the direction is right it will add one to the current position if it is left it will subtract one from the current position so now we also want to create variables to store positions so it will be let because it's uh, going to be dynamic so let position equals to zero so by default the position will be zero which means this first image right here okay now we want to create a function which will update the position update position like this okay so this is the function which will update our position this position right here so now what we will do uh, here we will get the direction okay we'll get a parameter whenever we call this function so now on clicking left this previous button right here we will call this update position function then we will move it to the direction of left so we will send this left constant right here okay so basically we are passing minus one so minus one will be received in this function so similarly, on this uh, next button, we will send direction to the right, All right. So this will receive either minus one or plus one. Now based on this, we have to update the position. So we want to also preserve it, preserve the current position. Current position will be say this position right here. Okay, this is the current position. Now the position that will be updating is plus equals to dir, or you can say position equals to position plus direction. So this position represents the previous value. So whatever its value was, if it is value, if it value was three, okay. If its value was three, now if you are sending minus one, it will be three plus minus one, which will be two, right? So if you are sending positive one value, then it will be three plus one, which will be four, correct? So based on minus or one, it will subtract or add from this position value. Now with this, uh, okay, we updated the position. Now we want to update the images as well, but before that we want to console log. Okay, so we want to know what is there inside these variables. So position, comma position, then current position. What was the current position and what is the new position, right? We could have also given a different name to this variable, but it's fine. We have to anyway maintain this value, right? So we can determine, we can think that it's the latest value. We can assume by its name. Now let us check our console. Whenever we click previous, you can see position is going minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So there's a problem now. You can already see position should not be less than 0. If it is less than 0, it should uh, come from the last item. It should be the last index of the array. It should continue. It should keep on looping. Similarly, on clicking next, I think it's adding. Yes. So you can see this console, right? It's reducing on clicking previous. It keeps on going less and less. And on clicking next, it increases more and more. So we have to put the restriction. Right, so we have to say if position is less than, we don't have to do anything with the current position, we are just preserving it because we have to use it to find the image, okay, before we move. So, but before that, whenever position is reaching less than 0, we have to set the position to the last item of the array, to the last index of the array, which will be images to length minus 1. So, always array length minus 1 represents the last index. Then if position is greater, if it is greater than images to length, okay, so if the position is greater than images to length, we want to start, if it is greater than or equals, okay, because if we add one to the last item, last index of the array, it will become equal to the length, right, so that's why we are going till equal, or if it is greater, then also in that scenario, it will set it to zero, <coughs> alright, we can also use else if, because we know only one of them can run not both at once. Now with this, let us check now if this logic is working. 
yeah one after one we are having zero right now and once we click again previous we come back from three so this is working now let us test this next but next button as well two three you can see it's coming back to zero now so basically now you can see the position is being maintained properly okay so this was just the variable that we have been tracking properly now we have to actually move these images in this carousel so that we can see the visible results right okay so now the main challenge is to apply the transitions and and to move the images right so we have to basically move the images when we click previous or next so we will create another function for that purpose because every function should be doing only one thing it should not do more than one thing so that's a bad coding okay so that's bad way of coding so what we'll do we will create a function called uh, move image okay or you can say move images because it involves more than one image okay so now what we will do we will call this inside this update position move images function and then we will pass this function these values which we have stored so we want to send the current position okay then we want to send the position where we want to move to okay so we want to send the current position and the new position and also we want to send the direction so whatever direction we receive we can simply pass it to this function so that we can determine whether to move towards the left side or towards the left uh, towards the right side in this image right here right so now we will receive these values so we have to also accept the parameters so we can say current position you can use the same names as well there is no issue now we have to determine uh, this current image so wh whichever image we are having we have to get this image now from the dom okay so how can we do that so we can say current image because so this is basically the index so we can select it like this document dot query selector so now here you have to little bit pay attention so here we will be using the attribute selector so we want to select that particular image okay so we want to be using single quotes or you can use template strings also here so src so we want to select that image whose src attribute all right it has the value of this one images so basically this current position okay because this is our index right here and images is our array so whichever image path it is having in that src so we were we are actually trying to get that from the dom all right so you can also console log this if you have some doubts regarding this but it's the concept of using template strings where we are interpolating a variable okay so basically this is a string images current position whichever index is there this src will be getting it and we will create this string right here this will give us that current image from the dom similarly we want to get the next image so instead of position i think it will make more sense to say next position next position so you can say next image all right so these are the two images that we have selected so you can also use console log to check the output if you have any confusion regarding this all right now again we want to define certain constants all right so this was our direction so now we also want to define the position values okay so you can say position equals to left will be minus 100 percent since we are dealing with absolute positioning okay this case is absolute positioning so whenever you use 100 percent or zero percent or minus 100 percent it describes the entire width of this image or the item that we are trying to move it will be clear in just a moment because i have a diagram that i'm going to show you so center will be zero percent and then right will be 100 percent okay so these three are the position values that we will be using okay to update our images okay the position of our images so now this is our diagram so check in this diagram carefully so i'm showing you three images side by side this is image one image two image three and this is the current viewport okay so this is the current view of the carousel where this image two is being rendered all right so now when we click previous okay what should happen image two should move towards the right side okay and image one should come to the right basically when you click previous the items move towards the right direction and when you click next the items move towards the left direction now the position of this image is zero percent from the left okay so this is basically the left 
position okay the parent containers the leftmost is called the left position so basically zero whatever value you give so from the left of the container is zero percent when you give hundred percent it means hundred percent away from the containers width so basically the right image is stored at the hundred percent width from the container and when you say negative hundred percent it means completely on the left side okay so this is the current index minus two I mean two and this is index one and this is index plus one so now this concept that's why I'm storing this in constant so minus 100 0 percent and 100 percent because this will be used like two or three times so I don't want to repeat the values so it's a lot cleaner to store in constants like this all right this can be a little bit confusing but uh, you can get this diagram from the github link below as well okay or you can take a screenshot of this also if you are having difficulty understanding or you can put a comment down there and I'll be happy to help you out all right now before moving we want to ensure the images are in their proper positions okay so now I'll put a check for the direction so if direction is equal to now again here we'll be using the constant so if it is direction that left so basically if its value is minus one okay so if it is direction is left which means the user has clicked the previous button and the images must move towards the right direction only then the left image will appear right and else you can also use else if is optional so else if direction is right so you will say move images towards left side so that the right image can be seen now, if direction is left move to images towards the right side so that the left image can be seen okay now before moving we want to ensure the images are in their proper positions now whenever we want to move left the current image should be at 0% no matter what sometimes it is possible that images might be in some other position okay it might be in minus 100 or 100% 100 to ensure that there is no such uh, confusion we will assign its left position style dot left and again the concept of position absolute relative must be clear okay whenever you are working with this so its left position should be at the center the current image the current image left position should be at the center always no matter what and the image that we are trying to show because of clicking previous button it should be waiting at the minus 100 position okay so this next image right here if the direction is left so basically if previous button was clicked the next image position should be waiting at the left side similarly when the direction is right this current image is same current image style left will be positioned at the center and the image that we are trying to bring should be waiting at the 100% left okay basically it should be after the full width of the parent container so it can be slightly difficult to explain this concept but if you have any difficulty as I'm as I've already told you can ask me in the comments I'll be happy to help you so now next image should be at the right okay so the left position should be at the right of the next image you can see it's hundred percent right so position dot right means hundred percent so this will happen before moving any image so before moving any image so we are ensuring that images are in the right position so ensure that images are in the right position if your code is not working you can anyways get the code from the github link in the video so make sure to check out that link all right if you are unable to follow along now update the image positions to the desired um, direction now we will again use this condition so if direction equals to left now you might think if we had already just updated this and again we are updating it down here so what was the use of doing this right there is a reason the images can be scattered in some other position as I've already told so this is ensuring that the images first stay in the right place it's ensuring that first the images wait in the right place before we start moving and also we are not going to instantly move it as you know this code will instantly run we want to run it after certain millisecond delay 
otherwise you won't see the transition effect so we will use set timeout otherwise there's no use because you just updated the value here and instantly you are again updating the value without any delay it won't lead to any transitions and smooth effects since you are making a smooth carousel we have to add some delay only then the CSS will show you the transition effect okay so we want the JavaScript to run at least after some delay not instantly so now update the final positions okay update to final positions so if direction is left so if you are trying to click the previous button and we want to see the left image so in that case direction is left we have to now move the images towards the right direction as I've already told move images towards the right side and if the direction is right move images towards the left side so to move the images to the right direction let me copy this or let me just type the current image which was before at the center it should now did you guess it should be now at the right okay so basically whichever was at the center it should now move towards this right place okay so that the left image can come at the center now the next image that we are trying to bring in here on click of previous button should now be position dot center now it should appear at the center position so applying the similar logic whenever we are trying to click the next button so basically when we try to access the next image the image at the center should move towards the left and the image at the right side should come towards the left the words can be really confusing okay if you are not getting it so make sure you rewatch the video or ask me in the comments so this current image it's it will go towards the left okay so move images towards the left side so that the right image can be seen so that the right image can be seen okay so the left will be towards the position dot left so the current image will go to the left basically it will reach to this 100% minus 100% and the next image will come at the center this is it now only difference is that the only thing is that now we want to apply transitions okay we want to apply transitions on both these images so current image dot style dot transition equals to uh, 1.2 seconds not 2 seconds 0.5 seconds 0.5 seconds similarly next image dot style dot transition is 0.5 seconds if you don't apply transition I think the effect will be instant let us check it once though this is our image when I click next you can see the effect is instant we want transitions right we want it to be smooth so you can use transition now let us try again so you can see images are coming like this now you can see there is a glitch here the images are just uh, coming one on top of another first of all what we want to do before we bring them to this position so this code is I've been telling you again that this code is for ensuring that the images first stay in their right position or initial position we want to ensure that images first stay in their proper initial position at that time when bringing to this initial position we want to disable any transitions okay we want to disable any kind of transitions which are applied we want to apply transitions only during the time when we move this so maybe we can edit in set timeout also let us try okay so to some extent this issue has been removed but the thing is sometimes if you try to do too fast uh, I think images are coming on top of this image okay so to ensure that other images don't overlap or other images don't appear on top of it if we try to move too fast we can move images far somewhere move images far somewhere at top so that they don't interfere okay so except these two images we want to move all the images far at the top or somewhere so look other images are kept far away from the screen like top one as uh, minus one thousand percent like image three and image four so they are kept far away from the screen so that they don't inf interfere with the normal working of this carousel okay so we want to run a for loop here for var i equals to zero here you can run normal loop i less than images dot length i plus plus so we want to update the image positions so we want to get the element here again and again so we can say documented query selector img then here we can use the index then we can say image dot style dot top equals to minus 1000 percent of course it has to be a string so it's far at the top okay other images now only these two images current image and next image 
their top should be zero. You can use zero percent or zero, it does not matter, both are same. When you use zero, the unit is not important, it's not necessary. So we have moved the top of the other images far somewhere, right? Now let us recheck. Yeah, I think there is no issue now. The only problem is that it's coming uh, out of this boundary. You can see the image is still visible outside of this black border, right? On this corner of my screen. So to avoid this, let us use overflow hidden. Okay, so in this container, we don't want any overflow. So we can say overflow uh, hidden then I think it will not overflow yeah it's now fine now I can remove this black border if you don't like it since it was for debugging purpose and that's it this is how you make smooth carousal let me just add a title here smooth carousal slider so thank you for watching if you like this video please click subscribe to my channel and I have more videos coming now, okay?